call people back to the sanctuary. And I just think I'm enjoying it. I invite people back to the sanctuary for the uh, strategic planning forum. I think it's going to be recorded. Uh, recorded, recorded for our use. I think not live streaming and then, but not put on the internet. But Mike will give it to you. No, Jerry. Jerry's got a different one. Jerry is already doing that. Please come and join us in the sanctuary. Please come and join us. Let's begin with a time of prayer. 
God, we are thrilled to be in your service, to be your people here in this place, and we ask that you will be with us as we gather today. Be in our thoughts, be in our discussion, be in the minds of people forming questions, and be in the hearts and minds of those who are asked to provide answers. We place ourselves in your hands for today, for tomorrow, and for all the days ahead. This we pray today and always, in Jesus' name, amen. I'll turn it over uh, for the moment to, to Jerry Kadelka, who is the, uh, he's the chair of our church council, but he has also agreed to be the leader of the strategic planning uh, committee that has been formed um, and whose uh, accountability we're, we're giving you today. Um, so, Jerry, okay. Can everybody hear me? So, thanks. Uh, uh, before we begin, um, I just wanted to thank um, Matt for that introduction. And just to really try to give, well, the goal for today is really just to try to give you an understanding of, of where we are, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and where we're going. Um, it is no secret, as we look around in the congregation of the pews on a Sunday here, <clears throat> that we're having some difficulties. So Mike, if you could uh, push up the, the slides when you get a chance. Poor Mike's up there like a one-handed paper hanger uh, trying to get things going. As a consequence of some of the things that, we've been, that we have recognized as a congregation, we have, uh, are undertaking a planning process. Now, all churches do planning. The question really is, what is the difference between that plan and a strategic plan? A strategic plan really is focused not only on individual aspects of our congregation and our missions and our programs, but really is to try to create a coherent message and, and mission and a, and a way forward that all of those things align in a way that allows us to use the resources that we have at our disposal and to find a way to grow those resources. Mike, if you just hit the space bar. There we go. So what we really are trying to do here is to define who we are, where we are, where we're going, and to move, hit the space bar again, Mike, and to move forward in such a way that we can actually, with God's help, reach our aspirations and serve him and our community. Next slide. Why now? As I said just a moment ago, KUMC is at a crossroads. Okay, we have um, our spirit just as I felt this morning in our, in, our, um, in our service, is stronger than ever. The folks that I work with on this committee and, and encounter every day in our church are dedicated to God's service through Jesus Christ. However, our numbers have, have been ever dwindling for quite some time. Um, and while we remain dedicated to, our, to the, fulfilling our mission, we, um, we struggle to maintain the platforms that allow us to complete that mission. And so part of the, our problem here is very obvious. If one looks at our budget right now, um, you'll see that we are currently running a substantial deficit. Now this is projected, obviously $86,000 is a projected deficit, is an enormous projected deficit. And so one of the things that we need to do is not to accept this deficit, well, we have two things that we need to do, is not to accept this deficit, is but to first of all, find ways and, me and methods to close that gap, and second, once we close that gap, to ensure that that gap does not reoccur. We need to build and find a way to build that bridge to the future. Now, we've, you know, there's a lot of questions, I'm sure, about the budget, and we'll entertain uh, a bit of that. Dean, I think, is still here, um, head of finance, um, who is more apt and more qualified to talk about than I. Um, 
But one of the things that we, I won't say we suffer from, but what we do have is a responsibility for is our current budget is dominated by our staff and our staff really are the, one, or the, 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 the personnel platform that allow us to complete our mission. The other, part, the other major piece in gray on this is our church building and that is, the, so those are our two major costs. These are our platform for ministry. In fact, it's really kind of ironic when one looks at the, the, the overall budget, what we actually spend on programs is a minuscule piece of what we do. Now, that's something that we need to think about as we move forward in this planning process and how we actually begin to, to, to rationalize and understand, are we spending, are, are we using our time, talents, and treasures for these things in the appropriate way? And that is the point of this strategic planning process. Next slide, Mike. So how do we begin? A strategic plan really begins with something that we have done before several times, and that is we begin to define our mission. What, are, what is it that we are really trying to do? We define our vision. Where do we want to go as a congregation? And third, where are our values and goals, which are how do we go about implementing our vision to get and complete our mission. We have begun this process um, in the strategic planning committee, and we have actually built these mission, uh, the mission uh, vision and goal statements. So who are the people who are actually doing this? Well, there's actually a, quite a few people who are on, involved in this committee, and most of them are here. If they could just stand up for a brief second to acknowledge the, that they're here, please stand up. Yes. Okay, super. <laughs> Jessica's Jessica's in the back. She, all I see from Jessica is a is a hand and a black shadow. There we go. So there's quite a few of us on this on this committee, and each one of us either represents a uh, a missional group or a, uh, one of our major committees in here and several other individuals. We are also being assisted in this process greatly by a, a couple of individuals who faith brought to our attention. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Betty Capella and um, Gerald, Geraldine Bard, who are actually um, strategic planning specialists and who have been thus far invaluable. I would say we would be not as not even an eighth as far as we have been without having these individuals on board. I think they're um, following us on the live stream, and I want to thank them for the work that they've done for us um, so far. They have offered this to us with, um, with uh, free of charge. And so I think that that is one of the first miracles of this process, <laughs> is not only have we obtained um, have we obtained the services of folks who are really extraordinary in helping churches do what they need to do, but they have done this in recognition of where we are in our, in our congregational journey. So, as a con so we have spent about four weeks now, Becky? I think so, yeah. Yeah, a little, just under four weeks. Where this, is, this committee is the, how to put it, it it's, it's both the hardest committee that I have been on in a very long time, and I've been on a lot of committees, both at the church, as well as um, at my work. And so I've spent a lot of time on this committee, but it is also by far the most rewarding and fruitful committee that I've ever been on, um, in, in fruitfully in this church. Um, I would say that I have not felt the, the Holy Spirit working on any committee like this that I have ever had in any other work that I've been doing. This committee, just from its outset, from the meetings that we had, in terms of organization, was seems to be blessed by what it is that we're attempting to do. What are we attempting to do? Well, we're attempting to live into, Mike, our next slide. And that is, we're attempting to live into our mission, which is our new mission statement, uh, which is to grow through the love of ju and justice of Christ to serve all and care for our community. This is what we will be living into, we propose to be living into as a church. This is our mission. Our vision, as a consequence of fulfilling that mission, is that every person who walks through that door or even out in the community has a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. 
These are the things that will be burned, hopefully burned onto your soul as we move through this process. As a consequence, how are we going to get there? How are we going to achieve this? How are we going to achieve this goal and fulfill the mission that we have set out for ourselves? Here we have identified six goals. I'm, I'm not going to read them out to you. You can read them for yourself. But what is the what are the what is the difference between this goal setting process that we have done up to this point and everything else that we that we have done? Before? Well, right now, what we're about to do is we're entering into a transition phase where we're going to begin to try to identify and align all the talents, all the treasures, and all the resources that we can use to fulfill this mission. That will, uh, is going to be part of what you, as a congregation, will be doing. I'll talk a bit more about that in a few seconds. The whole point of a strategic plan is not just to use words, not just to create words that we actually need uh, not just to, 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 to have these things that we can hang them on or put, print them on the back of the bulletin or hang them on the door, but it's actually to put them into action and try with each of us to work through them to manage, uh, and to really fulfill the promises that we are making both to our church and to our community. Next slide, please. So how do we begin? How did we begin? Well, this is now just, now we move into the world of, you know, of business speak. We performed a SWOT analysis in the space bar, Mike. What does that mean? Our, we, we, ran through our, we ran through our strengths. We have many. We ran through our weaknesses. We have a lot. We've identified our opportunities, and these are many. These are opportunities that um, are unbelievable when we think about who we are and where we, where we are. And then there are many threats to us one of which is financial. Once we have, and we have now identified this, and this took us a long time. Yeah. It took us a long time because we needed to be honest with ourselves. And that's part of this process. It's not just planning what do we want. It's how do we, what are the things that we need to get there? What are the threats to actually fulfilling that mission, vision to achieve our goals? This is where we are right now. Where are we falling short? What are the gaps? What do we need to do? What are the investments of time, talent, and treasure that we need to make to fulfill this goal? So in order to do that, we are looking through every aspect of what we do as a congregation. We're looking at our organization. We have lots of different committees. Does this work? Is this really how we want to do this? We're looking at our church ministries, our programs, and our outreach. Are these all the things that we want to be doing? Is, do any of do all of these things that we do, do they fit with our mission and do they fit with our mission and our goals? And do we, do we have the finances and resources to fulfill all of those missions? Next slide, please. How can you help? Well, where we are, as I said, is we're identifying these gaps. As a consequence of uh, what we learned about our goals, what we learned about our threats and opportunities, we've identified five subcommittees, five, I think that's five, up there. We need to actually deal with, we need to, uh, we have assigned individuals from this, from the strategic planning committee to be on these committees, these subcommittees. They're going to start meeting, actually many of them already have already started meeting, and they will be reaching out to you because if you think about it, every single one of these pieces, every single one of these aspects of what we want to do touches all of the ministries that each of you participate in. And we're not going to be, get to our, be able to get towards our goal, fulfill our goals, so that we can achieve our, our vision and our mission without the involvement of your ideas. We need to be able to find a way to harness all the things that we currently have in our church. That includes you, most of all, with God. And so I'm going to turn this over. Uh, I think there's only just one more slide, which is the questions. I put together this slide because I think it sort of encapsulates both where we've been, where we are, and who we would like to be. So I invite questions, and I'd like to invite uh, Becky and Matt to comment as well.
Sure, we can distribute that absolutely. And uh, my anticipation is that the subcommittee folks will be work will be reaching out to individuals as well. I'm pretty sure that's how uh, yep. all the committees are actually. There will, there will be people outside of the strategic planning committee who will be included in those um, in those areas. Yes. So, Mike, can you go back to the list of subcommittees? <coughs> I know. It's a one man show up there. This is being live streamed to, to folks, so it, he's, he's doing not only for you, but for folks online. Okay, so there are team leaders or subcommittee leaders, and uh, maybe the two of you can help me. Building and structures is Steve. Steve. Steve Harrison. And Don Newton. And Don. Where is Don? Okay. Um, technology and media is Mike. yours truly up there, Mike and Matt. Um, recruitment and retention is Jessica. Faith. And Faith, Faith. and you too, I don't know who's all on them. I have it written down. Um, ministry and programs is myself and Marcy, Marcy and where's Astrid? Finances, I believe is Mike. I'm sorry, Chris is leading that up with Cindy? Cindy and Tom Boats. And Tom Boats. So what we're going to do is look at the various aspects of the things we do. How do they contribute to our mission, which was is growth through the love of Jesus Christ? And justice. And justice. Thank you. Because I'm the one who said we have to have love and justice. So growth through the love and justice of Christ that we may reach out to all. And so we have to look at all the things we do, where there are some of the things we do that fall short and aren't needed, and where are the things that might be missing? So how do we turn this beautiful ship called KUMC towards growth? And that is really what, we're, what um, um, a strategic plan helps us to do. So as you've heard the names, and we probably should put these names out again for you all, but if you have ideas regarding those areas, please contact. If you have ideas that we need to do to grow this church, um, let us know, because this is God's church and your church. We had, we had a hand. Bob, did you? I just have a question on the program that we do here in the church. So yes. So let me address that. So did you all hear um, Bob's question? So what we have for that, there's two things I'd like to comment on that. One is we have many, many blue grants. And that's where we intend to pull, to pull those funding to continue to do those ministries. So I know we cut those in half because we have so much money through several of our grants to so more. We have, we have the best of all blue grants. That's correct. We have, yes, we have like four, three or four grants. So I don't think that you will see a shortage of any kind in those programs. Secondly, what we're doing is trying to determine, we're looking at every single ministry and program. How do these contribute to the growth and the love of Jesus Christ? How do they contribute? Everything will be looked at. So when we're done looking at this, we realign the church. 
towards growth. So what I'm saying is if there's programs right now that we have and that you, we've asked all the leaders of these programs to put in place an austerity budget for now, for now, until we realign. You are absolutely right. The building and your staff, we are the big, the big items for expenditures. And, and they will be assessed, evaluated. Um, we, the staffing patterns is the, about the staff, uh, who and how they are um, hired, et cetera, are part of it. And the use of the building and you know, how we use it, how we, uh, how we are stewards of the, uh, the utilities, et cetera, of the, of the building are definitely a part of it. As long as we're kind of on, well, okay, Karen. So uh, I saw the list of committees and they sound very familiar to me. Uh, not being a real active member of the church, it sounds like it's going to get the same committee. The finance, we have a finance committee. We now do. we have a special strategic finance committee. How are they going to do it? Let's just go, you want to speak to I that, Dave? You can stand up, you can hear it. This is a this is a work in progress meeting. This is a you've heard about you've heard that we have a strategic planning committee. What does that mean and what are they doing and what have we done so far? That's that's why we wanted to meet. We we anticipate having probably at least two more of these kind of uh, meetings to, to let you know what's happening with the strategic planning committee. Transparency is an is a very important part of this. This is not done in secret. Um, it's going to affect all of us. So we want, we just wanted to, to kind of report where we are. So that, that's what's it, happening today. Yeah, we felt it was important that at this point, since we had been working within the committee to develop all of these ideas and, and to build out the committees, now that we have built these subcommittees, they're going to be reaching out to members of the congregation. I think it's, it was, we felt it was important for the congregation to know exactly why they're being asked and what they're being asked to contribute to. This is, a, this is a, not a, just a plan, this is an action. This is going to be where we are going to change. Bob, to your, to your point, we are, there will be effective change. The congregation, the, our church, we can't just change. We, can't, we, can't, we have to change. We can't just do what we've been doing and hope that things get better. We need to find a way to make them better actively. Yes, Tasha. So I just wanted to comment. I was in the belt uh, in my trial belt with lots of strategic planning. And I, I think a key element, and correct me if this is not true, but um, it's a new way of thinking and living and moving. So although we have planning committee today and this is now going to be a, a special planning committee, the new finance committee with the strategic planning, those, that thought process and how they think, I think the goal is, 
Natasha is 100 percent right. Excuse me for just one second, Bonnie. The, the one of the part, one of the parts of this plan will be how are we doing? Okay, you're right. We do budget, but we don't say did that budget have an effect on our mission and vision? We've never done that. We've just gone on and said, okay, well, we need to do, the, we, we need to have these people, we need to have this mission, we need to have this one, we need to do this to the church. The question is why? Is that why, what we need, is that in pursuit of what we want to be as a church, as a congregation? That's the question that we need to be asking ourselves for everything that we do. There's a, there's a big word that's used among the millennials, intentional. We need to be extraordinarily intentional about every step that we make to grow our congregation. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine, it's fine. I, I just wondered, what, what is the process at this point to address the financial needs in the meantime? Good uh, question. In the meantime, because I know this will take some time. There are, this is a multi-pronged approach. Um, if, if you've seen the yellow sheets in the back that we use for uh, ordering Easter flowers or to make a contribution to an Easter alternative. The Easter alternative this year is uh, the general fund of the church. It's addressing, it, it's a, a step toward addressing the deficit. Um, we have also received, uh, I received today a, uh, a pledge of $1,000 toward the Easter alternative with a challenge. Al Shepard is, is making the contribution. He is, he's also making the challenge uh, for anyone to match or exceed his gift. Um, so that's an additional thing. We have also, uh, we have a number of uh, accounts within our, our saving, uh, church saving that are dedicated to particular groups in the church, um, that they are um, among those are the Memorial Fund, the uh, Pastor's Discretionary Fund, we call Concerns Unlimited, um, Columbarium, Columbarium, uh, and then various classes and organizations have raised money. Technology, and have, dishwashers. There, there are uh, numerous accounts uh, adding up to um, over a hundred thousand um, dollars. We have asked that there are letters that are going out this week um, to the, uh, the leaders of those organizations asking whether any part of, the, of, the, of their restricted funds, they're, they're held for the use of those organizations. If they will redirect those funds one time to the general fund, um, and Memorial says, has uh, pledged to commit to quite, uh, quite, a, quite a large amount. The, the discretionary fund, which is, is used at the pastor's discretion, but for many um, outreach kind of purposes, individual outreach within the congregation or uh, people who come to us for, for help um, with personal needs or family needs, that, uh, that money in the past has been uh, when that has grown, and it grows fairly significantly and fairly fast, um, that some of that was directed to the, uh, the Family Life Center project several years ago. Um, but that uh, will also be able to contribute several, several thousand dollars to the, um, to the general fund. We're hoping not to, you know, to use things on a priority basis only as needed, but but the, those organizations will be asked if they can contribute um, some of their funds. Some of them will not be able to. The, the youth uh, uh, funds are, are dedicated toward, uh, toward a, uh, a gathering this summer. Um, and the mission, we're not expecting the, the missions teams to, uh, to take away food from, our, from the people they're feeding in order to, to feed the general fund. Um, but if there are if there are places where where we can redirect those funds, we're going to do that on a short term basis. Um, so that that will bridge the gap for the current budget year. Um, 
that does the strategic plan is to plan for beyond the current budget year. Karen. I can tell you that we are meeting every Monday night. And there is an enormous amount of work that is going behind meeting every night or every Monday night. Typically, a strategic plan can go three to four months. I don't know. We're moving very fast. It could go quicker. It could go longer. We have to look. I mean, we're running as fast as we can. So if that, there is no absolute date. If that's what you want, we, we don't have one yet. Yes, I might be dead by then, considering the amount of time that actually happens here. Yeah. But, um, but that's the overall goal. But as, as Faith just pointed out, what's one second, Jeff? Um, Faith just pointed out, this is an ongoing, and uh, this is what Tasha was, was saying as well, this is an ongoing process. This is out a living plan, okay, where we have to be responding to the environment that we're in, and we will have to redirect and rechange courses probably a lot to readjust where we are so that we continue to move forward towards the growth that we would like to see. Jess?
that, that's the kind of, right. That's the goal, because if you don't have that measurement, yeah. you can say, oh yeah, well, we welcome everyone, but are you actually bringing people in there? Right. Are you seeing them both as measurements? Right, you just have enough. And that, that, right, that's, we, this is a, this is a progress report. Again, I, I, people hear, oh, there's a strategic planning committee, but nobody knows what they're doing. Um, we're trying to let you know what we're doing. Uh, that's Karen. Right. Matt made reference to the corner of the hill, the shoots in the back. How does anybody know they're there? Yeah. I find repeatedly, you couldn't have seen them today. They got put on the time series class that had a program plan and went for them until the last minute. That is a point that's very, very well taken. Faith, you probably, go ahead, if you'd like. Well, I'm just gonna say, it, it's not up there, but we have already, we talked about how to keep our members in bringing in people. We have to bring them in here. Tell us people in more than paper what's going on. Yes. So that, 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 that's part of the job. It has, the action has to take place to do it, but I don't think it's that hard. Okay. And to what? be, Without, without making this sound like I'm making an excuse, please hear this as a, an acknowledgement of the truth that you've spoken. Uh, both Becky and I came in a year and a half ago. Um, the, and the, the visitation pastor retired soon after that. Our uh, office uh, administrator came in during COVID. We don't, uh, on the staff, on the paid staff of the church, we do not, other than Susan, we do not have continuity of knowledge from the time before, uh, before COVID, when the church was kind of functioning as it always had. And we're, we struggle sometimes with, um, some things happen, you know, the forms come out for flowers, et cetera. And we may or may not know that it that it's happening. It, we're we're still learning, unfortunately. Um, and it it's helpful to to have input from uh, from people who have the institutional memory that is not on the staff. That that exists in the congregation and in the leadership of the of the congregation, but not in the in the in the staff. We had an abrupt change of all. The entire paid staff, except for Susan. Susan's all here. You were just saying that you uh, have no history. I would say I salute you. I would salute you even more because when you say you ask people regarding restricted funds or whatever thing else, that's an important move on all their parts because history here says that was a mistake at one point. So I'm glad to hear that if you're going to do that, that might be a step back. We'll, well, there's a lot of and I just want to acknowledge that communication is the biggest issue as far as I'm concerned on this committee. As we can tell you, uh, we sit around the dinner table and I say that communication is our biggest problem. And that is our biggest weakness, but it is also our biggest opportunity. And as we think about how to do things, it is the communication with our community, both the church and the our church community and the community at large that will help us grow. 
So don't think that it's, it is built into the DNA of this, of this particular endeavor. You heard me today Dean preach. Dean is going to oh, Dean's here. Thank you. 
we have that. We have a bridge of money coming from designated funds. Well, we have we have a deficit when, but in the prepared budget, the, there, the deficit represents the difference between known anticipated income and known or anticipated expenses. And the the income from the giving of the congregation, both the loose plate, which you know we weren't doing loose plate at all, but the, the, both the pledged income and the unpledged income from the, the contributions of the, the congregation has been dropping year over year for several years. Um, it, it, it's been made up by fundraising and uh, extra pleas and, and some of it was uh, in, in some years we've taken money from our invested funds for that, um, it, it again, as Dean said, it, the last three years we've had uh, PPP loans from the Small Business Administration for two years, and then last year we had the challenge, which was in recognition of a about a seventy thousand um, dollar deficit. Uh, a congregation member stepped up, so that was how we covered it for the last three years. Um, it is there. There is no big solution on the, on the horizon for this year. So that, that, was the, the, that was the catalyst for saying, we, get, we can't continue this way. We, we may not, you know, we, we chose not to slam the brakes on this year. However, going forward, we cannot continue. We recognize that, that we have a one year solution which would not, we can't tap that same resource again. So we have to plan for what, what ministry will we do and how will we pay for it? And that do, do we have to you know, lower the temperature in the, in the sanctuary? Do we have to reduce the, the, the staff? Um, we're at a, we happen to be at a, at a window in, uh, in that as well. I mean, I, I will be retiring soon, so there'll be a change, a time of changing the the lead pastor role, um, and how you know what are we going to, how are we going to address that? Um, so that you know we're at we're at a time when we can when we have a, a plan that will be of minimal you know minimal impact on individuals that we care about. How's that? Um, it's going to hurt. You know, I mean, they're, they're part of this process is, is cutting some things that are dear to people, either staff persons or staff positions or programs or uh, whatever. I mean, these, these are this is not an easy thing. That's why we're where we're we're taking a look at everything, everything we have, and what we don't have that we would like to have, and assessing. Does it does it fit? Is it a luxury? Is it you know? And and saying you know, do we it's like you used you know you talked about cable TV you know, we have some equivalent things in in the church. We don't have cable TV, but uh, <laughs> um, but you know what are we you know how are we going to? We're addressing these issues in a in a planned way. The the point table. for this for the for this is a bridge to the future. How do we get over this gap? And where do we go from here? How do we manage with the current income that we have to achieve and meet the goals that we have set for ourselves? That's what the plan is. A quick history thing. Um, we have reduced staff um, in that there used to be a huge portion, there used to be a drill and purge, and there used to be a visitation. You gotta, you gotta use the microphone because we have people online. It's got to be so people. No. The staff has been reduced over the last three years. We may or may not have noticed, particularly during COVID, but there's no longer a youth person, there's no longer a 
children's ministry person, and there's no longer a minister of visitation. Those things have been picked up both through our staff, through Becky and Matt, as well as through more um, lay persons picking up those things. But just, so we've been meeting the budget shortfall, or the church has been, I should say, um, over these last years. Um, but those are some of the things that have been happening. The gap got too big to ignore. And quite apart from the gap, doing this strategic plan is such a great thing and a real help, and as you were saying, a new vision, a new way of operating. And so you have goals for the next year. After a year, you're gonna change the goals, but the planning to get there will uh, have already continued. Right. Betty, right here. Yeah. Betty, wait, yeah. Betty needs the microphone. Or she must have here. Um, regarding strategic planning, uh, will the apartments be included in that? Because you know, over the years when I've helped in the office, you know, Dale would come in, or Bob Thompson, and talk about the expenses of doing some apartments that got damaged. But, you know, I don't know how much money we get from that other than the expense. I mean, it's a real part of some income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did, not, I did not include an income piece. The, the approximately 30% of our income, I think, Dean, comes from the... Uh, we, our, a net, our, we, were we, net. A, a, we net about 45,000, is that correct, John? We, there are, we, we receive rents and we, we pay the we utilities for the apartments and we pay taxes on it because it's in, we're not a tax exempt entity when it comes to the, uh, the apartments and we uh, make necessary repairs. But our, our net is several tens of thousands of dollars, 45 to 50 ish um, yep. is our net income from the apartments. We're going to look, we'll look at that soon, yeah. Um, so I'm going to speak from the younger generation because I think the reality is I'm the youngest person in this room right now by a lot. And I think that that speaks very, very loud because that is not how this church used to be. And when I look at um, those subcommittees, I know that they're all interconnected. Yes, bringing people into the building doesn't equal money, but it does when we have ministries and programs that they are invested in. We have heard from people who were here and left that there wasn't something for them. We think that we are reaching and have something for everyone but the reality is we don't and unless they're here and they're interconnected you're right the money doesn't come in but once we have something for them and they're connected and it's meaningful then they give back we talked about all these programs that we do and it's fantastic it's awesome when we were sitting down and looking at all we do and and the the two ladies who are who are leading us we're like, you guys do a lot. But the reality is there's missing pieces. We are Swiss cheese right now. The media and technology, okay, we can live stream. We're not using that to reach my generation. We're not using that to reach those younger than me. We're in a rut where this is just what we've done. The reality is COVID made it so that people don't have to come here on a Sunday morning. I can go on YouTube and find any sermon I want. I can find any type of worship service I want. So if I don't have to come here, I can go get the worship service that I'm looking for online. Well, what are we going to do to combat that? What are we going to do to bring people in? But it takes everyone sitting in here and those who aren't here to also step up. To take leadership in something that you are passionate about in this church because it has to be everyone taking leadership because those who do are going to get run down. I've seen it in youth ministry. I've seen it in children's ministry. I've seen it in every ministry. So part of this is also us as a congregation realizing like, hey, I have to take a stand and I have to take some leadership in that. 
I will be honest, as a young parent, it is hard. Almost every time I'm at this church in the evening, I have a husband who's never home because he works. My kids are always here with me. But to me, this place, this is home to me. This is family. All of you sitting here are family. I've been through things in my life that I wouldn't have gotten through without you guys. And the reason why I asked to be on this committee is because I know for me as a young mom, that's what I need. And I know that there are other young moms out there, young dads, young families who need that. How are we going to do that to grow? Because the reality is we got to find some young people and we've got to reach out and, and do the things that are going to bring them in so we can bring the money in so we can have more programs so that we can continue to grow and they can know what this family is like because there is nothing better than this family here. I know, I know there's a, there's a count church that we're not supposed to touch. Are we looking at using that? I know that's the account we usually just get the end. So, if, uh, yeah. did, did we get to just get the, all we are used in the past was just the uh, in, interest from that account. Are we looking at using that? And uh, I know it was, it's designated to be not be used, but is there's that no sacred gonna... cows here. We got to look at everything. Thank you. Yes, there Thank are you. accounts. And including the legal restrictions on the use of things. Yes, yes. I, you know that some of that is unknown. Uh, we need, need some research to be done. But okay, Lori. I know I'm saying something negative, but I'm hoping that out of something negative becomes a positive. Um, we had been to many churches, and it was always because we started out, Bob and me. Then we had a family. Then our family grew in the first church we came to. It didn't have a good program for kids. So then we went to another church. We got into that church. That church we grew with, but we ran into obstacles because our kids wanted to grow more with the church and they were putting our children under a glass dome. They couldn't do certain things. Let's not do this with our church and with finances. If we are in, have, with our finance area, if we are over, um, if we are financially not doing well, the congregation needs to know and not get into this problem again. Because mm -hmm. since we've been with this church, we have got, Bob and I and other people in this church, Cindy and Mike, within our horizon group. Um, I can name a lot of people, the Wolfburgers, everybody. I can name a lot of people, but that's getting in the past. We have gone through a lot. I want to make this church flourish. I don't want to go back. I want to start to make it better and not go back. And by going back, we're losing more and more people because they're having to deal with a lot of problems. Thank you. Yeah, that's the, the, the whole point of the strategic planning process is to go forward. Is to, and to, yeah, and, and we're looking at not only what are we doing, but what are we not doing that would benefit us, that would fit into our, to our mission and into what we want to be in the future. We are not the only church going through this. <laughs> One of the first things um, that, that our lovely leaders uh, who are guiding us through this said is, you're not alone. This is happening across the board in churches because the, the younger generations are finding it elsewhere, they're doing other things, and COVID. We're not alone in this. So please also don't feel like we're the only church dealing with this. We're not. However, we are recognizing right now that this is the time that we can make a change, that we can turn the ship around, but please, please, please know that we are not the only ones, we're not the only church dealing with this. Here, across the U.S., we're not alone. I 
Will Stay being in many other churches and doing it other strategic plans? My, my microphone should be on. That in working in other churches, this is one of the healthiest churches I have ever been in. And the fact that we're healthy enough emotionally and faithfully and spiritually will get us through a positive strategic plan. Uh, have that um, confidence that we're not coming out of a place of, oh no, we're coming out of a place of let's shift. And you have to be a pretty healthy church to do that. I think we're gonna get through this. So be positive about this. Maybe it should be considered an open-ended policy as opposed to your strategic plan that's gonna get us through the next year. I think we have to look at it past the year. I know we can only do one year at a time, but to close it off after a year is stifling. We are, the, the, well, the, this is, this is well, a... Well, that's not what you're saying. If that's what you're thinking, it's not what No, no, you're we're, saying. sorry, that, sorry if I, if I made that, uh, I gave you that impression. This is, I said, a living plan we'll ha that has to change. We need to create a, 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 a vision and a method that we can be a sustainable church that's growing. Not next year, not the year after, but for the next 20 years or more. That's really what this is all about. It's the changing environment that we have to adapt to, that we haven't really done to this point in a planned fashion, um, where all of the things that we're doing, we're aligned. We have, we have a true north, right? We have a true north that we, want to, that we need to align ourselves with. And that's what we need to marshal our resources to go for that true north. That's how we do it. I want to thank you, everybody, for coming. This is a, um, what, what I hear, and I'm very, again, through all of this conversation, I don't know what you feel, but I feel that we, I feel the, the spirit of the Holy Spirit just living through this group. We are all caring. We all want to make this work. We are all recognizing that we have a role and a, and a role to play to bring Jesus to our community. Let's do it. So please help us. When, when folks come to, to, to ask you for your input, your ideas to help us develop things, say yes. That's what it's all about, is saying yes and finding a way and accepting the change that we're going to have to have. God, this is about you. It is about us following where your Holy Spirit is taking us. Change is hard, but love is strong. And Lord, be with us in this. We know you have great plans for your church, and we know, Lord, that as I said earlier today, that you can make difficult things even better. That you can help us find a way when we're not quite sure what that way is. So Lord, may your holy fire work within our hearts that we may rise again. And let us know in all of this, Lord, let us know that you are the one who goes before us, calling us to places that maybe we never thought about. But in all of this, your love works within us, and we know that it is by your power that all things are made anew. Help us to make ourselves anew with the love and the justice of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Go forth. Sure. Did you say love? Did you say love? You're awesome. i got to talk to somebody. I'll be right there. Work on that. I'm sorry, buddy.
Hello. Hello. Hello.